So Barcelona take all three points in the first Clasico of the season. Everything goes their way in the end of this one. We'll be taking you through everything, all the post-match analysis and all the reaction and looking through the plays as well as Ian Joy will be joining me, Corey Bodo, uh, Ray and Phil as well, and we'll take you through everything that happened in that game. Corey, deserved result in the end of Barcelona winning? I don't know if I'd say deserved result. I think they took advantage of Ancelotti's um, tactical errors in the first half and the way the game started. Um, but in the second half, Real Madrid really did push on. I think the chances from Benzema were huge. Um, you know, the PK from Mich was a sure PK against Ronaldo. Things would have definitely changed in that respect. And, of course, the absolute perfect goalkeeper from Victor Valdez. You know, without these things happening, it could have been a different story. Well, let's talk about some of the goalkeeping. Bodo, at both ends, we saw pointers with the goalkeepers. Yeah, both foot goalkeepers were great. The second goal, Diego Lopez was in doubt if Baran would uh, go out and come out, was not able to, and then he was in the bad position. Sanchez mm -hmm. took perfect advantage mm -hmm. of it. Tactical changes, though, Phil, in this one didn't pay off too much for Ancelotti in the end. Well, the changes at halftime did, but I agree with Coria. I think that he outfunk himself. Um, if anything, maybe Pepe would be in more comfortable situation than Ramos was. Then he has to make the, sub the substitution at the half because of the yellow card. But uh, I have a feeling it's going to be a little bit different at the Bernabeu in the second leg, and Barca's glad they got three. Yeah, they will be glad they got that. And just quickly, Ray, penalty. Was oh, it a penalty? Of course, it's as, as <laughs> clear as the mole on Cindy Crawford's face. It's a penalty. <laughs> it's a penalty. And it wasn't given. Uh, Barcelona's been on the receiving end of that a few times as well. But really, that was the crucial tipping point of the game for me. Whatever changes the coach made Ancelotti at halftime, it was a resurgent, uh, rejuvenated Real Madrid who played tremendously well. OK, well, we can go to the camp now now. Jamie Easton is with Chappie Ferrer for all the post-match reaction. We have plenty of it coming our way. Jamie, what's the score afterwards? Well, the first Classico is over. Barca won, 2-1. What do you think about the match, Chappie? Well, it was a good match. Um, a lot of tension on the pitch as well. It is true that it wasn't the best of the matches in terms of quality. Um, very tactic match as well. Um, but what more or less what we expect, the Barcelona controlling the game, having the possession, Real Madrid just breaking on the counter-attack. And, um, well, the same script that's been happening the last years. And, well, this time Barcelona won. I think, after all, they deserve it. And, uh, well, three more points, very important win. Did uh, the starting lineup uh, from Real Madrid surprise you? Well, not really, because as we said in the f uh, at the beginning of the game, uh, a couple of, of teams already played against Barcelona with five defenders. It was more a 4 through 3 with uh, you know, two um, good defensive midfielders like Sergio Ramos and Kedira that played in the midfield. And, um, well, it's, it probably is the first time we saw Sergio Ramos playing in that position. But I think he wanted to control uh, the midfield, at least not to suffer too much in the midfield, put a lot of men in there. And, um, but it's difficult because Barcelona, when they have the possession, it's difficult to, to get the ball. And then the thing, when you have the ball, you don't have the same quality as, for instance, you have Isco or someone else in the team. But, uh, well, it had work um, somehow, but uh, I think at the end, Barcelona just controlled the game. Last question, who was the best man of the match for you? I think Neymar was outstanding. Um, he was very good. He would try it a lot, uh, tried 1v1s. He pressed, he wore hard, he was asking for the ball all the time. Uh, very mobile. I think he was, uh, for me, the best player on the pitch. Well, those were the first impressions from Chappie Ferro. We'll come back afterwards with more impressions, more opinions. Thank you, Jamie. Well, we do look forward to hearing from you. You just heard Chabi Ferrer there pick out Neymar as his man of the match. He scored his first Clasico goal. He'll be hoping to get many more. Let's take you through all the highlights from this game, though, as it began changes to both lineups that expected to not see Xavi, Iniesta and Cesc. We saw all three of them and then we saw Sergio Ramos playing in the midfield in this one and Bale starting. Now, early on, we see this in the 14th minute, a Sergio Ramos uh, yellow card for a foul on Neymar. Two straight forearms. He got away with the first one, but not the second. You can just see, it was quite a contact match, let's say, and uh, some decisions, yellow card being dished out. We'll talk about the referee It's as well. a classic oh, That's what we want, <laughs> isn't it? That's what you expect. And we see this as well, 18th minute, Neymar dribbling, and then this shot is saved by Diego Lopez. He had a good record in Clasicos before this one, Bodo. Yeah, it was, uh, again, in good shape. Uh, no blame on any save what was to save there helped his team a lot. 
And there's the man of the match in my mind, Andres Iniesta, maybe made one bad touch the whole game, set up the stage so many times, and here Neymar delivers. Yeah. There's not really a chance though, right? That the shot is not really convincing. He gets the deflection finally and puts it in. And Neymar scoring first here. Lionel Messi came close a few times in the 21st minute. We saw uh, a chance from Lionel Messi. This shot, though, would go wide. Yeah, not a lot of times he misses this one. Mm -hmm. yeah, by and large, all the, a lot of the Barcelona players and the, the Barcelona style of play just wasn't quite up to the scratch mark, right up to the operatic high note. They just were a little off the deal with the final passes too many times. Yeah, another man who all eyes were on at the other end, Gareth Bale. We see a shot from him go yeah. over here. What did you think of him today, Ray? Not much. I mean, very underwhelming, very unimpressive. Uh, athletic, he had a couple of great opportunities. That was one. He had a previous one that was very, very similar. It doesn't get anywhere near the target. shouldn't have started, though. No. No. It's too early. It's still too early after two weeks of his own preseason. Here a good play early. from Ronaldo as he goes out wide we saw it again later on the goal from Hesse but uh, this one was it a penalty or not I think it's a great run from Kadira and another good stop by Valdez yeah no intention from the defender there and uh, I wouldn't give a penalty on this one uh, Kadira so high up so many times in this game we did see him score in the 2012 Classico 2-1 uh, that was and we saw half time we'll be bringing you more highlights from the second half later but let's talk a little bit about the first half so it was Barca's after the first 45 minutes but a few chances not least Neymar scoring and a chance for Gareth Bale as well but it did go Barca's way absolutely and I, I think though Real Madrid perhaps a bit fortunate because we saw that one from Messi which he would normally bury we saw another one just a few seconds later uh, on the only bad pass of the first half by Iniesta when he had Neymar breaking in from the left it could have easily been three nothing Barcelona to the half instead one nothing and they let Real Madrid stay in for it. Me, that was from the, the cleverness from Tata's, uh, you know, experience tactically. They saw that Real Madrid was going to try and keep it compact centrally. They had all everybody squeezed in tight with the three center backs, and then the outside backs would push in. So what is there left open? There's Neymar playing on the flanks, and then Messi squeezing on the flanks. So that's exactly what they did, and they had their chances. I, mean, I, I think the big mistake was tactically, really, to put it up so defensively. Yeah. I heard Ancelotti the whole week talking about a lot of personality. We want to take control. We want to take. I agree. We want to play spectacular football. Yep. Yeah. And you take all the good footballers yes. out there. Yeah, so you bring away, a defender in, 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 the, the in midfield. Totally. Then you have Kadira, another defensive midfielder. Yeah. As one is enough, but you, you, but let's, just let's you have two. Okay. Because no, we've got, we've got to just move on quickly. Midfielders. We've got plenty more time to talk, and we will be doing so. But we've got Ian Joy standing by. He's ready to take us through some of the plays that made the difference in this game. Well, thanks very much, Kay. Making a difference in the first 45 minutes. It certainly was a scrappy affair from the first 45 minutes, but we did see a few breakdowns of communications in the Real Madrid backline. Of course, Neymar is a player that you do not like to leave completely open and exposed on the field. We'll have a quick look at it once again. We broke it down for you already at half time, but look at Neymar at the top of your picture there. He is just waiting for his opportunity. Kadir has just given away possession of the ball, but is too slow to get back into position. He leaves Ramos exposed. Carvajal, we've already pointed out. Now, defensively, in this position, and if I'm your centre-back and your right-back, you've got to push Neymar wide. Make it a tight angle for him to go across the goalkeeper. Diego Lopez is in a great position as the goalkeeper, but they don't. They get caught flat-footed. Carvajal and Bodo just said it. It's not really a great opportunity for Neymar, but Neymar's got quality and skill. He sees that far post. He gets a little bit of luck and fortune because it goes through both sets of legs and into the far corner. I'd say it's a great goal from Barcelona's point of view, but defensively, Real Madrid really let themselves down. The second opportunity, Phil just mentioned it. You would have put your house that Lionel Messi would have stuck this opportunity into the back of the net. Marcelo, just lackadaisical once again. Not concentrating, not prepared, and not organized. A little bit of a miscommunication along the back line, and he lets Lionel Messi ghost in completely unmarked. And Phil, you are absolutely right. I would put a million dollars on Lionel Messi to find the back of the net and find his ninth goal of the season. It wasn't to be, but it was a good first 45 minutes. And Barcelona fan, if you're a Real Madrid fan, you're a little bit disappointed, but the best was yet to come. Bye to you guys. Yeah, any pointers you'd like to pick up on there, guys, well, from I, what Ian's just said? What I was trying to say before in regards to the central midfield, it was Xavi and Iniesta. Remember the whole weekend, Martino's saying it's going to be one or the other. And then he tossed Sesks in the, in the mix to boot. But with Messi and Neymar out wide, as Corey had said, what you had 
were three, four guys, including Busquets, who could make that killer pass, and then you have two of the best in the world so cutting you had, in. So they had football in Barcelona, and you didn't have the footballers in there That's on the right. Real Madrid That's side. That's right. They and the ball the position was given away by that point. Ball possession directly went to Barcelona. Before the game even started, yeah. you could know, you could smell and what the, and was And one about. other thing I want to accent is the goal from Neymar, the setup from this player, Iniesta. That was absolutely magical, truly magical. Not the final pass, but the, pa the touch to set up his pass was exquisite. And he's been through some criticism of late, but he certainly made up for it in that game, did Iniesta, with that assist. Let's move on then to look at some of these second-half highlights. There were more goals to come in this game, two more goals, in fact, the game that did finish 2-1 in Barcelona's favour. Alexis Sanchez coming on as a substitute to make the difference, which we will see, but we see this in the 54th minute. It's a Neymar shot saved by Diego Lopez. What a great ball from Iniesta again, bending him Baran, on the run. Baran in doubt though, should I get it directly, should I leave it and then... Well, remember the ball. this is seconds after the Neymar pass. looked How like he was going to need to go to the hospital. The, the ball is absolutely split millimetre perfect over that distance. But what a response from Real Madrid in the second half here. I mean, what did Ancelotti say? What did he do? Well, they come he introduced out. Benzema, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> the great opportunity and Victor Valdez, look at this guy. This season he has wonderful and a pity to leave, see him leave next. Yeah, we've seen that. Angel Di Maria as well. Not the best first half of football no. he's had, but he certainly came alive in the second. Yeah, yeah. All the I love this catch responded. from Victor. Yeah, it was a good hit. But he sucked it up. Now, we're going to move on to talk about one of the controversial decisions. This came in the 71st minute. Mascherano fouls Cristiano in the box, but no penalty was given. I mean, That's for me, this is a clear PK. Mm -hmm. Mascherano clearly pushes him in the back, and I just don't think the referee had enough courage in such a big match to call this foul. This isn't clearly even close. A PK. This isn't even close, clearly. is it, Curry? No. I mean, this is PK. not one that you can... It's not even worthy of debate. Yeah, it's absolutely on. stoned, nailed on. And this, please, just, please. this just sums up Karim Benzema's luck of late. He's come oh, on, he gets this shot, and it hits the crossbar. Yeah, but we've never seen Benzema play like this other than the pre-season here. He's been, <laughs> he was Ray, wonderful. Should, should he have started? He should have now. In hindsight, it's easy. <laughs> but like Bodo said, there was other situations where you look at that lineup, the, the likes of Kadira and, and this Ramos uh, venture that they put into the midfield. But this goal... Uh, to put the, the, the cherry on the cake was just astonishing skill from the Chilean email international. Did you send your email already? <laughs> 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 well, well, actually called it. He's not I going to take it. That he would come in because the Real Madrid were gambling so much and pushing ahead, but it's one piece of absolute brilliant Chilean magic. It, this one is hotter than a Naga ghost pepper with that touch. <laughs> Absolutely the same point, magical. Diego Lopez did, committed the cardinal sin. You don't start to come out and stop. No, uh, he was in oh. doubt if Varan even gets close to the ball and Alexis Sanchez perfectly And, and Phil, you would have been criticizing Lopez had the Chilean taken it past the defender. You would have been criticizing him for not advancing. <laughs> You've got to give full credit to the Chilean. He picked the right card from his right hand at the right time. A brilliant world Class goal. And Sammy Kadira here with a shot saved. Sammy Kadira getting in the box plenty today. We did see him score in 2011 in this game. Beautiful ball, a little too selfish. You have Ronaldo, you have Hesse wide open back post though. The disappointing thing is though, he gets up so often, but he doesn't score. He gets Look in this, this position a hundred times. Beautiful ball again. And we see uh, youngsters shining on the day, Hesse with the this goal. The one that wasn't no, no, good no, enough no, for How much did he cost Real Madrid Zero, again? Zero, I think. Yeah. Zero. Yeah. 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 Always good, obviously, to see youth products doing well for both sides. More used to seeing it for Barcelona, but fantastic to see it there for Real Madrid. But not enough on the day. It finished 2-1 to Barcelona. That puts six points now between themselves and Real Madrid. As Real Madrid had closed in two, three points. And there's plenty to talk about when it comes to this game. Let's take a look at some of the stats, though, from this game. Possession quite evenly balanced in this one. Considering it was, what, 63%, I think, in the first half. So, yeah, give credit to Real Madrid and Ancelotti for oh, the adaptations. No, Barcelona the gave ball. the position away. They don't have the ball. You can't do anything with it. That was first half already to see. You know? Real Madrid in ball position. They had it without any hustle from Barcelona. But they couldn't do anything. They couldn't take advantage of it. That, there was a, not that, football enough. That's the enough thing. Are they, is it because they're not used to playing, not used to having the possession? They're a very counter-attacking side, Corey. And it seems that when they do get the ball, it's sometimes they don't have a plan. Yeah, it was a bit sporadic at times. And they waited too long to get involved in the game in terms of the game plan. I think tactically, they came out the wrong way, like we always speak about. And then, Ray, I think, you know, Benzema, okay, he didn't have the best start. But this game was too built up for the stars like Neymar for, for Barcelona to start, which 100% I think he's fit in well for him to start. 
But in terms of the other side, should have Bale started? Should Bale have started? I think Benzema yeah, right. should have definitely started up top. Mm -hmm. Give Bale the last 20, 30 minutes to push on. That would have been his, that would have been Ancelotti's bravest move. Had he said, I'm not listening to the critics, and he I'm should've. sticking with Benzema because in the second half, he had an enormous influence on the way Real Madrid played. Or even bring Morata from the beginning. Yeah. Bring Benzema mm -hmm. or Morata. They're both fit. Ancelotti will come in from big play over minutes. this selection. Yeah. He'll be the one that carries the can for this defeat, I think, here. Okay, well, let's get some of the post-match reaction. Karina Kashnova has been in the mix zone at the camp now. She's spoken to Alexis Sanchez and Sergio Ramos. Bueno, eso es lo que espera, lo que espera el equipo. Muy contento por por ello y y por mi gol, y por la victoria. I'm very happy about the goal, obviously, and the victory. Every player wants to play in this game. I'm very happy. I'm going home very happy. And uh, it's not over here. We need to keep going. Oh, I saw the goalkeeper step forward a bit. I didn't have another opportunity. I had to sneak it in. Obviously, this is a, a very difficult team, Madrid. It was a very nice match. Thankfully, we won and we're happy. This continues. It doesn't finish until it's the end. Martino, se te nota la confianza este año, eh? Creo que un partido después de jugar con lo dije. It's a game that after I played the the way I played the other day, I felt good. Y bueno, te perjudica bastante. So tranquilo. Por qué? Alexis, muchas gracias. Bueno, como he dicho anteriormente, no. I've said it before. Con la que no se puede luchar. There's certain things you can't fight against. Ha sido muy determinante el árbitro. I think today the referee has had a big influence. There was a clear penalty. But I'll stay with the good things that we did. The game that Real Madrid played, we showed a good side of ourselves against a very difficult opponent in Barcelona, who always makes things difficult, especially in their stadium. It's been a long time since we've seen Barcelona. Scramble like that. Today they have, so we're not taking anything away from them. They've scored two goals, but there are things that happened, like I said, that they changed the game. Those details have made an influence. I thought there were, I thought there were penalties there. Uh, we've done a lot of work, a lot of sacrifice. So those things changed the game. They changed the results, and as I've said, it's been a long time since we've seen Barcelona scrambling and Barcelona. Wasting time at the end of the game, but I think that uh, the loss aside, we gave a good account of ourselves and worked hard today. Well, playing in uh, defensive midfield, we didn't have a lot of time to practice it. We did a little bit the day before the game. Uh, it's a position I've always liked, but uh, I'm just a player. I do what the coach tells me. There we go, Sergio Ramos saying he does what the coach tells him, didn't manage to finish this game out, taken off as a precaution, no doubt, with the yellow card that he received, replaced Villaramendi. He says that details change the game, but goals certainly do in the end, Phil. No, absolutely, and I think he did well there, as well as could be expected, but that was the thing, and it really shows also someone you haven't mentioned is Mesut Uzel, who they elected to let go and keep Di Maria. They needed an Isco. They needed what Modric did in the second half. They needed someone to drive. It wasn't there. Would the penalty decision, had it gone in Madrid's favour, change things then, uh, Ray? I think so. There was so much in the ascendancy in the head, Barcelona, on the ropes. And it was uh, wonderful to watch for the Los Blancos viewpoint. But it didn't get it. And it, it, it's really a, 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 a bad situation when a referee doesn't give such a clear penalty. This wasn't a case of Cristiano looking to go down. He was bundled off of the ball. OK, well, plenty more still to talk about. And we'll be doing so after this short break, stay with us. Thanks for joining us here on Be In Sport for this post-game Classico special as we're taking you through all the post-match analysis and the reaction of our pundits here in the studio. Before we move on to talk more about this game and some of the individual performances, we can go back to our reporter, Jamie Easton, who's with Chappie Ferrer at the camp now. Jamie, more from you. Well, uh, we want to know the final conclusions that Chappie has found here after the match. Is this six-point gap between Barca and Real Madrid the real gap between these two teams nowadays? I think at the moment it is. Uh, Barcelona, even though that they're not playing 100% uh, at the moment, um, 
they've been playing together for a few years. Um, for me, it's a more solid team. And uh, Real Madrid is a team under construction, so probably in a couple of three months we'll be talking differently, and they will be more solid at the moment. Barcelona, Barcelona better. And um, it was it was a good game. It is true that probably it would have been better if Messi would have been in a better conditions, 100%. So he didn't have the best of the games. Um, and I think that Tata just realized, just putting uh, at the end Alexis there and a second uh, holding midfielder, just basically just to balance the team. But uh, it was it was pretty good, a uh, pretty good team, pretty good game. And um, well, six points gap, I think it's fantastic. We were discussing uh, here in Barcelona during all the week. Uh, who would Tata leave on the bench? Cesc Fabregas, Iniesta, Xavi, finally they all played. Yeah, they all played. <laughs> it seems like he went for the easy solution, isn't it? So uh, Pedro and Alexis didn't start. Um, Cesc, he had to start because it, he didn't play. Um, and Iniesta and Xavi, you cannot rest them. Obviously, nothing to say about Busquets, he will always play. So uh, it was a huge game and all of them had to be on the team. So. The better solution, obviously, wasn't on the side. So <laughs> it was Pedro or Alexis, so both started in, in the bench. But, but do you like the rotations that Tata is doing? The rotations are very good. Mm -hmm. um, but then uh, it's early in the season now, so you have to be careful at the end uh, because everybody wants to play. You know, the World Cup will be probably in two, in two or three months uh, in April, and uh, everybody will want to play. Um, but let's see. I think it's something that he needed to do, and. Nobody did it before, and he needs to rest players to be fit, all of them 100% in April. So um, I think he's doing pretty good at the moment. Well, Xavi Ferrer likes the work that Tata Martino is doing as a Barca coach and likes as well the rotations. That's everything until now here from Barcelona, live at the Camp Nou. Thank you, Jamie and Albert. That was a very Barcelona-heavy post-match reaction there. So we will take you through some of the Madrid post-match reaction. It was Carlo Ancelotti's first Clasico as Real Madrid manager. He spoke at the Camp Nou press zone after the game. This is what the Italian coach had to say. Buenas tardes, Mr. Jaime Rodríguez del Mundo. Le quería preguntar por la reacción de su equipo en la segunda parte. I want to ask about the reaction your team had in the second half. There was the penalty appeal to Cristiano. The second half was very good. We've put more pressure. We've worked harder. We've had uh, control of the match. We've tried to score. Had some good opportunities to score. And after, obviously, the penalty, it appeared uh, very clear. I think everyone has seen it. The referee's not uh, called it. Hola, buenas tardes. Juan Ignacio García Ochoa, Diario Marca. Quería saber qué buscaba eh, colocando a Sergio Ramos. De I'd like to know what you were thinking putting Sergio Ramos as a defensive midfielder. Equilibrio. Uh, I was just looking for balance. The objective was to put Ramos uh, to give us some balance in midfield. After, after the match against Juventus, Yarramendi had a little bit of uh, muscle fatigue. I didn't want to risk him because uh, he had an injury at the start of the season. So I've spoken with Sergio and talked to him about playing in that position. He played well. So this is the reason. I'd like to know if you thought the referee was decisive today and the other play that Real Madrid appealed for, the uh, supposed handball in the area. I wouldn't comment on the handball because the handball was a very difficult decision. It's clear that uh, it's a moment in the match that's very important. If we get the penalty call and, and a card as well, it could change the game and the result would be different. How, what percentage of the blame goes to the referee and what percentage of the blame goes to Real Madrid for the loss? No, I wouldn't uh, put any percentage. I don't want to judge. How do you say episode? I think the game itself, in the first half, we've had uh, too much concern to play. We haven't played the way that uh, we've wanted to, and we did so in the second half. 
played very well in the second half. We had total control. Barcelona's had very, a lot of trouble. And that's what it is. Percentages, I don't know. Well, Carlo Ancelotti didn't want to criticise the referee too much there, but there are some controversial plays we do need to talk about, not least when it comes to handballs, which certainly didn't go in Real Madrid's favour on the day. And we'll also talk about the penalty decision as well. Early on, I think Gareth Bale got flagged for a handball and it seemed to have hit, hit his head. head. Well, his head looks a little like a thumb, so I guess. <laughs> and then a little bit later on, it looked like there was a, a handball that Madrid should have been given that they weren't ready. Yeah, you know, uh, Ancelotti, I don't think that the, the handball call was a handball at all. I mean, his arm's down, the ball rolls, and there's no action from the hand or the arm. Uh, but this was brilliant by Cristiano, driving on and absolutely emasculating Dani Alves. A brilliant ball across. It triggers off as the goalkeeper onto a player that's already got his arm and hand down. And I think, you know, you're going you're gonna to ask for this, but you'll ne I, I don't think you'd ever find a, a top-class referee uh, giving this one. Take a look at it again, Kay. Yeah, you can see it here. But his do you arms. think on the day we saw yellows dished out as well? We saw a few decisions that, you know, were, may have made the game go another way, Corey. Was the referee strong enough in some of his decisions on the day for a game of this magnitude? I personally don't think he was strong enough. I mean, the PK says it all. Clearly, that's a PK of Mastroni against Ronaldo, and you have to call it. Even though the magnitude of this game is massive, you have to call this out of foul, even though it's 1-0. And Madrid has a perfect you know chance what, to change sorry, the game. I don't think it's the, as I said earlier, Kay, I don't think this one's even open for debate. I think Barcelona fans themselves will just say this one should have been a penalty. Barcelona sure. said in lifetime have been on the receiving end of this situation a number of times. So again, maybe it balances out, but that one was a penalty, Kay. OK, well, let's head back over to Ian Joy. He's on standby to take us through the plays a little closer. Well, thanks very much. Well, I can't believe the guys have been a little bit critical of Real Madrid throughout the course of the 90 minutes because it was a much more impressive performance in the second 45 minutes and much better opportunities from Real Madrid. It was great football, great creation, but a lot more aggression. Bodo was talking about it at halftime. Not enough in the first 45 minutes, but we certainly seen it in the second 45 minutes. Have a look at this. Iniesta receives a hospital pass, but great pressure from Modric. And of course, you've got to look at Dani Alves. He's the wrong side of Cristiano Ronaldo. And this is a great opportunity for Ronaldo. It's a good strike, but it's an even better save from Valdez in the right place at the right time. Now, the debate and topic is definitely about the referee in this situation, the penalty kick. Cristiano Ronaldo does ever so well to break through. It's a pace, and of course, he's maybe running a little bit too quick to keep his balance, but there is no question about the contact from Mascherano. Inside the box, it's a little bit unfortunate that he doesn't receive the penalty kick. I think the referee in any other game, had this been a Real Madrid against Osasuna game or any other team, maybe not a game of this magnitude, he might have got that penalty kick and definitely should have got it now. But we did see some substitutions which changed the game for Real Madrid. And have a look at this strike here. Absolutely fantastic. Now that speed is wrong right there. It's 94 miles per hour that Benzema strikes this one. And of course, when luck is not on your side, it certainly isn't. That one deserved to go into the top corner, but unfortunately it did not. But have a look at the last goal. Real Madrid let themselves down. And once again, unfortunately, I'm going to have to pick on Marcelo here. Out of position, but I cannot believe what Marcelo does next. I've highlighted him here. Now at this point in time, he should be supporting Varane. He doesn't. He completely stops. Varane is now back towards the ball. He's got no chance because Alexis Sanchez is playing very well this season. He's got the confidence to try something very special. But of course, still look at Marcelo. He's still too far away. And he's slowly jogging back into position. And I don't even need to talk about the quality from Alexis Sanchez. Five goals this season, all of them coming at home in the last seven games. Simply outstanding finish. But what a game it was. And Barcelona, did they deserve it? I'll let the guys discuss. Back to you. Well, we will let the guys discuss that one. Good points made from you there, Ian. Six points now separate Barcelona and Real Madrid ahead of the game. Ancelotti and a number of Barcelona players, including Puyol, said that the, the, the result's not decisive at this point in the season. There is a long season ahead, but six points is a good place to be at at this stage, Bodo. Yeah, after the game, I would say definitely. Before the game, everybody's cautious about his statement, but after the game, six points is a lot. And if you've seen the game the first half overall, uh, I think it was a clear demonstration that Barcelona still holds everything in its hands. OK, well, this time last year in this exact same Clasico, it finished 2-2 with Ronaldo and Messi scoring the goals at both ends. Perhaps we didn't see the Messi shining as much as we're used to in this game, Phil. We didn't, especially in the first half. I am wondering 
if it was tactical because he had a feeling that it was going to be Pepe or Ramos that they would stick out on the midfield to basically harass him or perhaps still not 100% back from that hamstring, but allowing him to come in from the flank everything in front of him this is one if he's 100 percent healthy i think he buries we did see in the second half though when they needed him to get some possession to get some moves almost created a third goal uh, by breaking through unexpectedly uh, he's still okay but it's still not 100 percent the tactical situation that for my money had nothing to do with it it doesn't matter if he's playing against attila the hun let alone <laughs> sergio ramos it doesn't matter to him he goes out there and he's just not match fit. He's truly just not Ray, sharp you know what as he love usually to see? is. I love to see that. This is the one few times lately Messi has not performed, but other people have picked him. That's right. That's what we they always got see Neymar him for. saying, oh, he's yep. not playing well, so Barcelona doesn't play well. And you know what? Neymar comes out on his debut yep. and picks up the slack. And, and that's why he is a good signing for Barcelona. Yeah. We're also, talking about it. If, if Messi doesn't get there. Neymar steps Ronaldo, up. without a shot in the first half, I think only one maybe in the game. They needed Bale to step up. And he wasn't able to. He's still not fit. The same thing. Even less fit than Messi is. And I think you've well, got to give full credit as well to the Barcelona coach for that substitution at the right time, bringing in that electric pace of Sanchez and giving and him catching a, out. a standing and ovation. One, right, yeah, but Neymar. not just that, Bodo. That one piece of true stardust magic. I mean, Ian can break it down. We can all break it down on who's to blame there. That was one piece of absolutely scintillating it, it, brilliance. It really was. But we've talked about Messi, so let's talk about his arch nemesis, Cristiano Ronaldo, particularly in the first half. It was kind of the same for him as well. We saw him a lot deeper than we're used to seeing him as well. And we also saw him sliding out to the left and to some effect, uh, almost created a chance in the first half, or did create a chance, almost created a goal, and did create the, the goal at the end. Playing a provider a little bit, but uh, they needed someone else inside, and without Benzema, there wasn't anyone Can inside. Can we talk about Bale a little bit and, and wonder what, what this 100 million euros are? It's too early. He's, he's not fit. Come he on, Bodo. He, is, he, he so is not fit, but the problem is if you have a, an expensive player like this, you want to bring him in, but where? So, then so why start he's starting him? all why over. Di Maria goes into the middle. Into the team, Bale goes yeah. to the right. Bale yeah. goes to the left. Cristiano to the middle. So there was a lot of changes just to put one player in there. Really? But then Cristiano Ronaldo mm. still coming off when he did get chances as well coming he's for class, him. Kay. I mean, he's absolute world class, and then this is what he's got. He'll always bring that threat, and there you can see his passing was brilliant. He was bringing other players in. I didn't see anything even close from Gareth Bale to touching that man's ankles. I'm sorry, <laughs> not even in the same stratosphere. Well, it certainly shows you just how much he's matured as a player when it comes to Cristiano Ronaldo, and you cannot accuse him of being too much of an individual player. We could just see that by those stats. Stay with us. Here on Be In Sport, we have plenty more post-match reaction on the way just after this short break. goal from Alexis Sanchez for Barcelona at the time it made it 2-0 it was a stunning goal it's not the first time he's come on in a league Clasico and made the difference and Ray how did you react to this one I in the booth? Really, it's just one of those <laughs> jaw-dropping pieces look at this and then he sees the defenders coming towards him and in a nanosecond you've got an absolute megaton of skill coming out of this red hot chili pepper <laughs> absolutely <laughs> fabulous and, 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 and a goal that just takes the heart and soul away from your opponents but it didn't don't want to be a goalkeeper that you don't want to be a goalkeeper in this situation one thing that none of us have mentioned though is that this was barcelona bouncing back that had two draws before this a draw in the league against osasuna a draw midweek in the champions league against dc ac milan and what better way to bounce back than against your eternal rivals real madrid it was his first classico let's hear his thoughts afterwards tata martino standing by in the camp now in the post-match press conference Le quería preguntar primero por qué visualizó previamente para poner a Messi por fuera o What was the thinking behind putting Lionel Messi on the outside at the start of the game? What did you see to come to that conclusion and to use a system which you hadn't used much so far this season? Hoy han estado girados, me gustaría saber por qué. En Respecto a la entrada de Cesc, era oh, with uh, putting Cesc in the starting 11, it was about having a player in that position who could eh, serve as a, la idea era give us some depth. La con Leo. The idea at start was for Cuando him to derecha, change positions with Messi. Este, when Messi played on the right, de, de he would play as a center forward. Leo se and when Messi dentro, would move into the center, este, then Cesc would move wide. 
to deal with Marcelo. But when we saw Real Madrid's formation, and we heard about the idea that Pepe or Ramos could play in defensive midfield, we thought that maybe that area of the pitch could be very busy, and we wanted to have more of a one-on-one -on -one situation with Messi on the right and Neymar on the left. In terms of inverting them, inverting them had to do more with uh, covering for Danny Alves and helping out Javier Mascherano with Cristiano Ronaldo. Sonia Germán de Raku. Le quería preguntar si ceder la iniciativa en la segunda parte al Madrid. So 2-1, it finished to Barcelona. Tata Martino will be happy with that. He comes out of his first test against Real Madrid unscathed. Thank you for joining us here for the post show on Being Spot. Thanks to all the panel for being here with us. Plenty more live football on the way for you today here on Being Spot. We'll be heading to the Serie A, so stay with us. But thank you for joining us for the Classico. We'll see you later.